Okay, so let's talk about some gems to be aware of for the drawing. Here I've got a simple assembly of the head component of a flashlight. And I'm going to take that into the drawing simply by File, Make Drawing from Assembly. Okay, let's choose B size, give us plenty of space. Okay, hopefully everyone's aware of the view palette. If not, it's a really nice tool to be able to drag and drop your views into your drawing. It has all of your standard views available. I want to bring attention to this current view. Just be very careful of using that because it will change depending on what your assembly or, in the, well, in this case it's an assembly, but even the part, depending on how it's oriented the last time it was saved, that's what the current will be. So it might change on you, so just be careful of that. Sometimes it looks just like the isometric. If I bring a view in, let's say um, I'll just bring the front view in, and I want to keep it as hidden lines removed, but I'd like it to be, I like it to have a little bit more color to it, and I, and I do, like I said, I don't want to make it shaded. So let me make this a little bit bigger. I have some options that were added, and a, not a big deal was made about this, and I don't know why, because I think it's pretty exciting. But in the document properties of your drawing, under detailing, there's an option to use the model color for HLR, HLV in drawings so that now the color of the part is reflected in the lines for the drawing. So it's a really nice way, especially with large assemblies, to differentiate between the different parts, uh, especially for detailing and things like that. So that's a good one to be aware of. Another thing that I wanted to point out for drawing specifically, sometimes there's a very, very specific view that you need to find uh, and include in your drawing. So let's let's say, just for example, I needed a view that was very specifically just like this, and that's not really front, top, right, and or any of the ISO views. What I can do, I showed you the space bar a little bit earlier as one of your tips. So by pressing the space bar, it brings up your orientation dialog box, and the very first button here adds a new view. So it looks like a telescope with a star. If you select that, we can call this view whatever we want. So it's called a named view, and I'll say this is um, bulb view. Well, if I could spell, that would be good. Bulb view. And it adds it to the list. But also what it does is it adds that to the view palette now. So if I look at my drawing, at my view palette, I now, if I refresh my views, have my bulb view. So you can include that as well. A lot of times, especially once your drawings start getting crowded, it's kind of difficult to grab the frame of a view to move it around. So a quick tip is to hold down Alt when you're trying to drag a view. Then you can select anywhere within the view and drag that. So Alt and just select anywhere in the view rather than having to grab the frame itself. Let's do... Well, that's a little bit too big. There we go. Okay, the next item I want to show you deals with dimensions. This was added for 2011. I'm just going to use a smart dimension in this case. So I'm going to choose these edges here. And notice we get our rapid dimension, which you can turn on or off. Those are great. Let's just not use those for a second, though. I'm going to show you a couple of things. Uh, and I'll do from here to here and just kind of throw it on there. Um, that's fine. Maybe I want to change that. Instead of being a radius, maybe I want this to be a linear dimension. So change that to linear. Okay. Now I want to sort these dimensions. So what I can do is select those. And then by, well, I missed it. <laughs> select those and then I get this dialog box. So it's a little button. You have to hover over it. And this first button is Auto Arrange Dimensions, which is awesome. So if you click that, it automatically spaces those and determines the hierarchy as they should be displayed. So even though I have a duplicate here, that's okay. You can kind of see what I was referring to. 
And the nice thing is if you add another dimension in, maybe I do a dimension now from the corner to the corner of this guy. Add that in and it'll automatically space that one also. So it continues to auto space. So that's a great one to utilize as well.